Nothing is more important than color when you work with your images in Photoshop. Fortunately, Photoshop provides a lot of functionality that will allow you to inspect and alter color in your photos. And Photoshop provides several tools to accomplish this. And one of the main tools is the histogram. So that will be the subject of this lecture. Now, all color is composed of light waves. All colors give off specific light waves that can be analyzed. Astronomers have known this for a long time. They can tell whether a galaxy is moving towards us or moving away from us by examining the signature of the wavelength. The human eye is not capable of seeing these wavelengths outside the visible spectrum, but in Photoshop we can analyze these wavelengths using the histogram. Now to use the histogram we just simply go up to Window and we select Histogram. Now by default it will not be docked into the dashboard over here. Now what that means is next time you open up Photoshop you'll have to reopen this. Now if you don't want to reopen this you can simply drag this over into the dashboard like like so, but we're not going to dock it for this lecture. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up an image. And I have an image already that I want to show you, and that is of this nice, beautiful cardinal. By the way, as usual, I'll provide a link to all the images used in this video. Now you can see here we get this nice big histogram. Now by default, this is not what is selected. Actually, it would be if you open it up and you click on this down arrow, the compact view will be selected. So this is what you should see first when you select this little down arrow. Now you always want to go ahead and select expanded view, and this makes everything a little bit larger. Then what you want to do is go ahead and select all channels. Now if you notice, we got a graph here with red, green, and blue. And this is for RGB, red, green, blue. And of course you probably have dealt with RGB many times before. It is those three colors that compose every other color that you see. No matter what color you are using, it will at least have a little bit of red, a little bit of green, and a little bit of blue. Now what I want you to do is go up here and select RGB. And this is probably the default that you're going to use the most. So basically this constitutes what's down here in these three graphs. So these three graphs equal what's up here. So you get this sort of combined view. And then you can see them individually. Now the key concept to understanding the histogram is farther you move to the right, you'll get lighter tones. The farther you move to the left, you'll get darker tones. So if these wavelengths, and that's what these are, were all the way to the left, you'd have a very dark image. But as you can see, most of the colors are right in this mid-range. And this is usually how you want your photograph to look. You want the majority of these peaks right here in the middle. Usually that's what you want for a nice looking, well-balanced photo. And they actually, they always refer to these as peaks, by the way. So here's a peak. Now you can see this is the blue peak right here, and these two peaks right here form the red and the green. Now remember, as I said, the farther you go to the right, that composes lighter tones. The farther you go to the left, you get darker tone. And everything in the middle is kind of mid-range. Now if you take a look at this, let's actually flip back to this color so we can get a better idea of this. Now if you take a look at this, green composes most of this image, right? So that's why it makes sense that this composes most of the lighter tones in this video. The red right here, as you can see, that's right in the middle, right where it should be. Now, we don't even see blue here, but remember what I said. Blue is in here to some extent, even though we can't see it. And that's why it's to the far left, the darker tones. We really don't see it that well, but it is present here. And that's why it's all to the left. Now, let's go ahead really quick and let me flip to another image here. And let's go to this blue sky. And let's see what happens here. Take a look at that. Now the blue composes all the lighter tones in this image. See how that is farther to the right than the red and the green, which you can't even really see anymore, right? Even though it consists of some of the colors in here, it's barely visible, and that's why it's farther to the left. So see how that works? Okay, so let's flip back to RGB. And actually, let's go back to the image of that cardinal really quickly. So you can see these peaks are pretty nice. Now what you don't want, at least on this combined view, it's normal, by the way, in the single views of the color for them to go off this top edge. But what you usually do not want in the combined view of the RGB is for these peaks to go off this top edge right up here, this top edge. When that happens, you start to lose information. And usually you do not want that. But there might be specific instances where you want that, and we'll talk about that in future videos. But these are pretty good peaks to have. Nothing's really bleeding off the top of the edge here, and these are nice solid peaks that we have. So this is a very well-balanced photo. Now, what happens when things are not balanced? Well, the main thing you get is what's called an overexposed picture or an underexposed picture. So let's go ahead and open that up, and I want you to watch these peaks, what happens. So first, let's go ahead and we'll open up an overexposed image. 
and take a look at that. Everything now is to the right. You see that? There is nothing on the left. There are no dark tones in this image. Everything is to the right. And take a look at here even. This right side is going right off the edge. See the top edge here. See that? And this is why we're losing information. This is this overexposed portion of this photograph right here. You would immediately recognize that because everything is to the right and then a lot of it bleeds off this top edge. So there's too much light in this photo. But you can see how the histogram sort of reveals that. See how we have no dark tones here to the left? That is a classic example of an overexposed image. And actually Photoshop will allow us to fix that, which we're going to talk about in the next video, by the way. Now let's go ahead and take a look at an underexposed image. So let's select this one. You're going to notice a complete shift and everything will be on the left. Take a look at that. Everything is on the left. So in this photo, we have too many dark tones. And again, this is something we can fix. And again, you can see this, how everything's trending to the left here. And again, this is something we're going to take a look at in the next video, is how to use the histogram to fix light issues in your photo. So let's go ahead and we're going to open up one more photo. I want to show you something here. I have it somewhere. This photo right here. So let's open this up. Now, remember I said, generally speaking, you do not want these wavelengths to go off the top edge. There are, however, certain conditions where this might be okay. Now, if we take a look at this photo, this looks pretty cool, right? This photo looks just fine. In fact, it looks like they wanted this high contrast effect where the flower would draw most of the attention. So in this case, they didn't really want a lot in the background. So that's why this is fine in this case. They wanted this big contrast. That's okay to have this huge peak on the left where it's coming off the top edge. In this case, this is probably okay. So it's not always a problem to have the wavelength going off the top edge. Like I said, usually you want everything in these midtones, and it becomes a problem when there's nothing on the right or nothing on the left, then you probably have a photo that is overexposed or underexposed. But you can see here we have a high contrast photo, so this wavelength in this case is okay. And let's go ahead and actually open up one more photo, and let's take a look at this Klamath Basin. Let's open that up. This tends to be a little bit darker photo, so that's why you can see up here everything's sort of trending to the left. So a little bit darker photo. If this was a little bit lighter, we'd have higher peaks over here. But generally everything's kind of nice in the middle here, and this is a nicely exposed image. So I think you're getting an idea how the histogram works. See you guys in the next video.